Now, the Catholic Church will experience a reformation uh, to some degree in response, and this reformation will be focused on um, re uh, verifying Catholic beliefs and cleaning up the Catholic Church and building a new sort of spiritual dynamism, a spiritual sense within the Church. So in terms of teaching, both the Council of Trent and Ignatius Loyola and his Jesuits, as well as the Ursuline sisters, those nuns that are established, uh, an example of a religious group uh, that is established to educate young women. In terms of teaching the faith, we see uh, many groups, right? As I mentioned, Council of Trent, Martin Luther, or not Martin Luther, the, the Jesuits, Loyola, uh, the Ursuline sisters, um, and other religious groups will be there uh, teaching the faith. Um, and also spreading the faith. Um, the Jesuits, for example, are involved overseas in co conversions. Um, and also within Europe, these uh, religious groups will move into areas uh, to make sure to make sure the Catholic Church uh, remains in place in those areas. They'll also go to some areas that have become Protestant in an attempt to re-Catholicize uh, those regions. Um, in terms of cleaning up the church, the Council of Trent sets new policies. For example, it says, says that every uh, diocese much, must have a seminary. So every diocese much, must have a seminary here in Los Angeles. The seminary is in Camarillo. And so it's there, and that's where priests get educated. And why was this so important? Well, the Renaissance humanism, that key focus on education, and the sense that many priests were making things up, making up uh, you know, um, these uh, superstitious things that people would have to do or uh, were ignorant about the faith. So every diocese has a seminary that we can use as an example of the spread of education. Um, in addition to that, uh, all sorts of abuses were clamped down upon. For example, simony, pluralism, so the sale of church offices is forbidden and holding mo mo multiple church offices is forbidden, and the sale of indulgences is clarified and limited so that those abuses do not continue. And finally, the Counter-Reformation, the Catholic Reformation, experiences a sort of missionary, uh, mystical fervor that we see, not just with the overseas, uh, the overseas efforts to uh, convert people, but also back in Europe. There's a sense that the church is this mystical institution uh, and uh, therefore, um, there's this new mystical um, connection between the people attending church and uh, the church experience. So, for example, Baroque, beautiful Baroque art would be made, these, these beautiful sculptures, for example, like Bernini in, Paris, in Rome, or, or paintings that would show these, you know, suffering of Christ or the suffering of saints and martyrs and that would therefore try to create this intimate connection between people that would see them and these, you know, leaders, Christ, the saints uh, of the faith. And so, and, and so there's sort of this, this renewed focus on, on building up the, the spirituality of the Catholic Church as part of the Catholic Reformation. Now it's interesting to think about, well, what is the interaction between these religious changes and government. Luther, if you remember, emphasizes that the political authorities trump the religious authorities. And so Lutheranism spreads only to those areas where the political authorities reform the church and, and follow the Lutheran ideas. So this is northern Germany where you've got many princes reforming the church in their regions. Denmark and Scandinavia, Sweden and Norway, these are the areas where we see Lutheranism spread because those authorities take over the church and reform the church in those areas to be Lutheran. The other area where you see the church now as a part of the state is the Anglican Church, the Church of England. But this is not a clear victory everywhere for the state over the church. We also see examples, for example, Calvinism where the belief is that the church should control the state. 
um, or certainly should the church should uh, be able to influence the policies of the state so that state laws are following church morality. So as we noted before, in Geneva, we've got that theocracy. Uh, and a great example of this is the Puritan Revolution with Cromwell, where Cromwell reforms the laws of England. He gets rid of the Anglican Church. He's Puritan. He gets rid of the Anglican Church, and he puts in place uh, this reformed Puritan Church. And the laws that are put in place are moral laws about how people should behave to be good Christians. Now, of course, the Catholic position long had been that there's these two separate spheres, the spiritual sphere of the Catholic Church and, of course, the uh, state sphere of the political authority. Um, and so, um, obviously, they are interconnected because part of the role of the political authority was to protect the state or the, the church. Um, but we see that Protestantism goes in two directions, one church over state, the other state over church. What are the effects on social classes? Well, we see amongst the lower classes, there is in Germany a, a, a sort of uh, a, a excitement that comes with this Reformation because it's uh, reforming these uh, re uh, religious authorities. Um, and many people, as we noted, don't really like these religious authorities. They view them as corrupt or as part of an oppressive uh, feudal system. So there is, in the 1520s, a peasant uprising, the peasant rebellion or peasant war in Germany that causes great destruction as peasants don't just reject the church, the traditional church, but many peasants believe that the liberty of the Christian includes a freedom from serve or other feudal obligations so that they should not be forced to work without compensation or pay high fees or that their serfdom should be alleviated. Uh, and so this is uh, the, you know, the peasant rebellion that is brutally suppressed by the authorities in the Holy Roman Empire. Hundreds of thousands of people die in this process. And Luther, of course, sides with the authorities because those authorities were the people that he looked to to reform the religion in their areas. And so it's interesting now we can look at at the Reformation and think that the Reformation did have an effect on government, but it doesn't, it's not a social revolution. There's not a change in the societal order. There's no breakdown of feudalism, for example. The nobles and the elites, the landed elites will remain in place. The serfs and peasants will remain sort of, uh, you know, as serfs and peasants. And, um, and we will not see a dramatic societal change. The other thing I want to say is that what we see is that the Protestant groups that survive are those that are supported by elites of some, of some sort. The Protestant groups that su survive are supported by elites, either the ruling authorities, like kings or princes, elites like nobles in areas, or elites like the merchant bourgeois elites the middle class elites that are emerging in cities and urban areas, especially in Western Europe. So we see many bourgeois merchants uh, for embracing Calvinism. And so, for example, in the Dutch Republic or in the Netherlands, the Low Countries, we see Calvinism sort of being followed there and, of course, challenging the Spanish Catholic king. And that Calvinism will ultimately survive because it's got supporters in strong positions, uh, wealthy supporters. Likewise, Lutheranism will survive, as will Anglicanism, because it's got supporters in high political positions. Whereas the Anabaptists, these sort of lower, more, uh, you know, many peasants are Anabaptists, many of them advocating, advocating dramatic social change, they will be wiped out by these uh, political authorities in many areas. So, for example, the Must, uh, Munster Commune was that you know where they abolished private property and declared the the uh, you know the kingdom of the saints, um, and where they allowed polygamy, for example, and they sort of because it was allowed in the Old Testament, and so they got rid of the old political authorities and the old laws and created this new commune, right, where land was held communally. And that, of course, is seized, or, you know, surrounded, and then eventually captured, and, and those leaders are 
uh, you know, suppressed. 